dozens of Sikh businesses have been burned to the ground. <laughs> Roving gangs have torched hundreds of cars and buses as they search for Sikh drivers and passengers, often indiscriminately burning any car in sight. Blood for blood is their rallying cry, and their violence has penetrated virtually every section of the city, rich and poor. Thick plumes of black smoke are visible on the horizon in every direction. Many Sikhs, with their distinctive turbans and beards, have disappeared from the streets, taking sanctuary in their temples. But even here, they weren't always safe. This temple was stoned and ransacked, its holy books burned its occupants beaten. A mob even threatened this Sikh member of parliament who called the president's office for help. I said, what do I do? The mob is here. And he said, why don't you leave the house and go somewhere else and stay with a Hindu friend? I said, is this the best the president of the republic can do? He said, I'm afraid at this moment, yes. With the violence spreading, the new prime minister, Rajiv Gandhi, has ordered units of the Indian army to move in and help restore order. Tonight, with fires still burning, a round-the-clock curfew has been imposed on some areas of the capital, and troops have been given shoot-on-sight orders in cases of violence and arson. Still, there's no law and order in this country. If this can happen in oppos leading opposition in this house, what happens to the common men in the streets? And the home of three people, they're really holding 30 million Sikhs uh, as hostage. Sikh historian Kushwan Singh says the police and army have not yet shown they are capable of control. If they are not able to contain the violence, I think the country will disintegrate. And that is tonight's fear, that further violence could force Sikhs back to the Punjab, where the Hindu population may face retribution, and Indian unity that Mrs. Gandhi gave her life for could be lost. Henry Champ, NBC News, New Delhi.